Ladies and gentlemen, a dark cloud hangs over Ottawa as we say goodbye to our beloved public safety minister Marco Mendicino. It appears that he's no longer in Trudeau's good books. He's been given the boot and been replaced by a scandal-free Dominic LeBlanc. Hmm. In honor of his widely respected tenure, let us review Marco's legacy. Violent crime is up 32%. It's only gone up 32%. 32%. 32% rise of violent crime. Violent gang crime is up a staggering 92%. 92% in fact. 92%. Doubling of gang murders. Okay, so maybe large cities have been struggling a little. But don't worry, it's Harper's fault. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, we've continued to invest in police when the Conservative government before cut. me cut. cut services and funding to police. You should perhaps look at the number of assault-style weapons purchased by Canadians under the 10 years of Stephen Harper's government, and you would see the challenges we're facing right now. The but don't fear. Marco has been busy cleaning up small towns with his Bill C-21. Cleaning up the hunting rifles, that is. Nothing stops a downtown knife stabbing like a ban on duck hunting rifles. A moment ago, I listed four stabbing deaths that have happened in the last three days, including a police officer. And the Prime Minister glibly got up and said, well, he's going to ban hunting rifles. <laughs> Stabbings happen with knives, <laughs> not hunting rifles. We've seen 10 police officers lose their life in the last year. But don't fear, the Chinese police will provide a replacement. There are at least two police stations run by Beijing, a foreign dictatorship in Canada. That minister said they were closed. Now we find out that not only are they open, but they got tax dollars from this government. Which the RCMP are definitely shutting down. RCMP have repeatedly, repeatedly confirmed that they have taken disruptive action to stop foreign interference. Kinda, definitely, sort of shutting down. The minister also claimed that their illegal that the illegal Beijing police stations uh, operating in Canada were closed, but that wasn't true either, was it, Mr. Speaker? Don't you feel safe? In fact, he's so busy keeping us safe that he can't always get around to reading his memos. However, we learned today that his office knew in early March and was informed again in May. In other words, he did know, and what he said was false. Someday he'll get around to reading that Paul Bernardo transfer memo. But until then, rest assured that there is an internal review process. I have also made it clear to my staff that this should have been briefed immediately. Corrective steps have been taken. I have dealt with it, and we will now always defend the rights of victims. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Most notable, though, was his diligent navigation of our nation through the trucker convoy occupation of Ottawa. He lived up to that name. Public safety was his top priority. Wow. Well, I suppose no politician can be perfect. He will be missed. His honest and very transparent answers gave us confidence in our government. Marco, let's raise a glass to you. You handled the trucker convoy, the gang violence, the stabbings in the Chinese police stations exactly as we expected you would. Well, folks, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. God bless. And I'll leave the last word to Raquel. Everything the Liberals have done to say they're doing it for public safety has resoundingly failed Canadians, right. Mr. Speaker.